Hello everyone, today we are going to have a chat about one of my favourite topics, reverse dieting. I think I say it as much. Reverse dieting, I think I say it as my favourite topic on every video, probably because it is, but anyway, reverse dieting. Now I've talked a lot in all of my videos before about what reverse dieting actually is. So you want, if you want to go back, have a look at that, and there's definitely videos on that there. But today, we're gonna to actually talk about kind of the reverse dieting aftermath, or what can kind of happen when you finish a diet and say you don't reverse diet properly, or you're finding it really difficult to deal with. We're gonna kind of more talk about the psychological response almost to reverse dieting, and or a lack of reverse dieting, and then also the physical response as well, because obviously that's important to talk about. So the reason that I'm doing this video is purely because I've been there before. I've also seen clients go through it. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, it is not fun as a female at times to reverse diet. I'm sure guys as well don't enjoy the process, but unfortunately it is a part of the whole dieting cycle. So at the end of the day, I'll re-summarize what reverse dieting is if you've never seen any of the other videos before. But basically reverse dieting is a state of when you finish a dieting period. So let's say you've done a contest, you've done a show, whatever it is, you've done that for eight, 10, 12, maybe 20 weeks where you've been in a caloric deficit. So where you've been lower consumption of energy in comparative to energy out is obviously increased as well. So what actually happens afterwards? Now, a lot of people will have post-comp blowouts post dieting blowouts, even if you've just done some dieting plan for six or eight weeks. Afterwards, who's been there before where they've gained weight, they've put all the weight back on and then some, or maybe even more weight after they've gone through this period of dieting. So this is where reverse dieting comes in and reverse dieting is basically what we actually do at the end of this dieting period. If you have a good coach or someone helping you, you can actually reverse diet on your own as well at home if you understand the principles of what it is. But basically it's a case of increasing your calories slowly over time, mainly carbohydrates and fats because generally protein stays pretty stable and basically monitoring that response within what your goals are. So if your goal is to like jack on some muscle mass and you're okay with getting a little bit of body fat in the process, you can probably go a little bit more aggressive with reverse dieting. If you're someone that wants to maintain as close to as possible that physique that you got to, then obviously you're gonna reverse diet a lot slower. Now there's pros and cons with the two. If you reverse diet really slowly, you may still feel like you're dieting. So what I mean by that is if you're only increasing your calories, 50 calories a week or 100 calories a week, and you were on say 1400 at the bottom end of a contest prep, and you're only going up to 1500 a week, you're gonna still feel like you're dieting. And this can be a massive part of the problem for my female clients when it comes to a psychological standpoint, because then often sometimes they find themselves binging, struggling to stick to it, because what tends to happen when you start reverse dieting is your hunger actually picks up as well. Your leptin levels are boosted and you've got certain hormones in your body starting to go, wow, you're feeding me again, like this is great. So I'm gonna get more and more hungry and utilize food more efficiently, which is a good thing. It means your metabolism starting to fire. But on the same front, it can be difficult to tackle that hunger. You're gonna to wanna to overeat, you're gonna to wanna to undertrain, you may feel a little bit lethargic as an increase in carbs, or you may feel better, but a lot of the time people actually feel worse. So this is something that people don't often speak about is these side effects of coming out of a dietary period. Now, I still believe that reverse dieting is the safest way to do things, but there's a couple of tips I wanna give people when it comes to this to just really look after your mindset. All right, so the first one is making sure that you're, have a, you have a specific goal, okay? So if you finish this dieting phase, your goal needs to be to either try to maintain closely to that, if that's your goal, to get to a healthy level of body fat. Let's say it's comp weight, that's not gonna be maintainable, so it might be getting within you know two to five kilos of stage weight and staying there year round. If it's a normal diet that you've been doing just for life, then your goal may to be maintained as close to that, maybe staying within one to two kilos, because obviously we have weight fluctuations. Now, if your goal is to jack on some size, start building some muscle, then that's gonna be your other goal. So that's gonna be a little bit more dictated by kind of keeping your body fat level in check. So there needs to be a specific goal, and I know I feel like I've said goal about five times, but it is really, really important, because if you come out of this stage where all you've been focused on is aesthetics, how you're looking, how lean you are, how shredded you are, how low body fat you can get, and then you finish that, and there's nothing there. There's like, it's like, what do you focus on now? So making sure that you have clear goals in mind. And another great goal to have is a non-aesthetic goal. Why not have a strength goal? Why not be like, I wanna now do 150 kilo deadlift. I wanna be able to do 10 bodyweight pull-ups. 
whatever your goal is, have something in place afterwards to help with that mental and psychological response of you going, fuck, like I've achieved my goal, like what more is there for me now? So that can be really, really important to keep your mindset in check. The other thing and my number two tip is understand that you're gonna put on body fat. Like that's pretty clear cut. It's gonna be really, really hard if you've had to push extra hard to get this lean done. You know, a lot of cardio, calories are quite low. You need to understand that this isn't a maintainable level of body fat and that you're gonna to have to gain a little bit of body fat. And that mentally you've gotta prepare yourself for that because as a female, it can be very, very difficult. Guys, if they put on a little bit of fat and a little bit of muscle with it, they tend to just look bigger and bulkier. But for girls, you tend to notice it a lot easier. And that can be very, very difficult. So my number, another tip for girls is do not buy clothes when you're at the end of a contest prep or at the end of a dieting period that you know you're not 100% gonna maintain. Because you will put those clothes on, and I've done this before where I've bought some tiny size six shorts and then gone and put them on a few weeks later. And then I've been focusing on growing my glutes and then all of a sudden they don't fit. And you get super, super down and depressed about it which is crazy because your goal now is to grow. But then mentally you have this little battle where you're trying to close and they don't fit the same. So for girls, if you've struggled with this, I want you guys to comment on this video. I want you guys to give it a like, give it a thumbs up because it is something that we don't talk about a lot. The actual psychological response to the aftermath of following a diet, following a reverse diet, whatever it is, it can be difficult. So my number three tip is to remain being accountable, but also start to relax a little bit. Okay, so when you're reverse dieting, make sure that you're actually chilling out a little bit in the process. You're not going so relaxed that you're not tracking at all because obviously we don't want to gain fat too quickly because it's not going to have a great response in terms of our body composition. But make sure you start to chill out. Like that's a big one. You don't need to track every single thing under the sun. Start to estimate things. Start to kind of go on holidays and track your macros sporadically. But don't be so obsessed that you're just like sitting there like on my fitness pal the whole time. So no one wants to have that friend at the dinner table. You know, start to go out and be more social. Start to enjoy life, but at the same time, still have some form of accountability to come back to because it's really not that difficult to spend, you know, a minute on my fitness pal every day just kind of going in and summarizing what you have had once you've gone out for a night out or even doing it the next day. So the big thing, guys, is to make sure that in this phase of reverse dieting, of looking after yourself, you're doing it for a few reasons. Your reverse diet, to get your hormones and your metabolism back to a really healthy and optimal level. So a lot of females when they diet, they'll start to lose their periods, they'll start to slow down their libidos, all of these things that are showing you that your sex hormones are starting to slow down. A reverse dieting is gonna help to improve that again. So understand that this is from a health standpoint that it needs to be done and that you've gotta kinda of let go of those aesthetics a little bit. Doesn't mean you just let yourself go and blow out but to focus on the more important things in life and that your health is so much more important than how you look tenfold at the end of the day. If you are the most shredded person in the world, but you're super, super unhealthy, then there has to be some form of a balance between the two. So they are my top tips on reverse dieting and the aftermath today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a like, so that I can bring more content to you guys and help you out in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll chat to you soon.